What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We're going to be talking about one trade that I made today on the 25th of January in 2019, as well as some other stocks and some other ETFs that did very well today. But for all you guys that do enjoy these videos, feel free to smash that like button, it really does help the channel grow and I do appreciate it if you guys do hit that button and let's get started with today's video so overall guys right now the market has about nine minutes left and it's looking like we're going to close the day green the spx also known as the s p 500 the 500 largest traded u.s companies is up around 21 dollars and 50 cents up around 0.8 percent right now the dow jones guys up around 178 points up around 0.7 percent and the nasdaq had a killer day today guys it's up around 1.7 percent up around a hundred and fourteen dollars nearing the close of the market today so we noticed that the spx guys the s p 500 is one of the indices that we still see under this 180 day simple moving average uh resistance right and we've been talking about this resistance over the past couple of videos we can see from the sell-off that we've been seeing since october guys you know the market has been holding below this 180 sma we can see it here in the middle of uh, october here in the beginning of november and here as well in the beginning of december we were all rejected by that simple moving average and just to clear it up right now guys we are still technically being rejected by it right now since we do see um it, it's still acting as a resistance right we see the green candlestick here it got rejected this morning guys and we, we're starting to see a red candlestick forming as we're closing the market in about five six seven minutes here so this is a good sign that the spx is having trouble still breaking above um you know this resistance although we had a green day today or at least we're looking like we're gonna have a green day unless something ridiculous happens which i doubt so you know that's pretty much it in terms of this longer term chart guys we're still under that resistance and if you guys recall in yesterday's video i was talking about this particular pattern that we were seeing in the spx it looked like a bullish pennant pattern right i was talking about how if we broke this which we ultimately ended up doing right that is a very bullish move for the spx right and we can see i drew that pattern right here the bullish pennant for those of you guys that don't know just look it up this is you know a variation of that pattern we can see you know i was saying is it, it's either going to break to the upside which it ended up doing like i said or if we're going to continue the downtrend we were going to get rejected by the top of this uh you know the resistance of the top of this channel which we ended up not doing and uh you know over this 20 day one hour chart guys you know we're still technically holding a um, you know uptrending pattern in the SPX but again we're seeing a very strong resistance at around 2675 which is putting us under that 180 SMA on that bigger time frame chart on the 180 day four hour chart guys so what am I looking for in terms of next week guys I want to see the break below the 50 SMA on this 20 day one hour chart I've been waiting for this guys you know if we were to break that pattern from yesterday we would have broken below the 50 SMA today obviously we popped up we made a bullish move today putting us further above you know and continuing that uptrend pattern right so we want to see ultimately a rejection at 2675 a rejection a strong rejection on that 180 SMA on the larger chart here a very strong rejection right that would be ideal for the continuation of the downtrend and ultimately again like i said guys a break below this 50 SMA and a continuation down maybe into the $2,500 range closer to that 180 SMA here on the 20 day one hour chart that is what i'm going to be looking for for a reversal pattern to the downside for the SPX and guys you know right now we're in a very very uh you know interesting spot in the overall markets you know we've been getting a lot of news about Trump and the trade war are they coming to an agreement or not we know we have to be by an agreement by March 1st 
with China, right? So there's a lot of tension still in the market. You know, if we don't get to an agreement with China by March 1st, I don't think that's going to be good at all for the stock market. And I'm sure a lot of you guys out there would agree with me. But let's say we do get a meeting and we do get an agreement by March 1st. You know, this could be a very good sign for the market to potentially honestly get out of this um, downtrend. But let's not get ahead of ourselves, guys. You know, we have yet to see, you know, really good news about the trade war. We've been getting some false optimism, in my opinion, from President Trump. And, um, you know, I, I know a lot of you guys can agree with that as well. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about that. So in terms of the Dow Jones, you know, we're actually peaking above, slowly above that 180 SMA here on the this 180 day four hour chart but I'm not too worried about that guys because like we can see from the past three times we've peaked above it you know briefly in terms of this 180 SMA we've gotten pushed down we've gotten rejected after right we can see we peaked up above it a little bit here got rejected down peaked up a little bit got rejected down peaked up a little bit got rejected down so the fact that we've had about nearly one month of recovery now in terms of the Dow almost one month honestly from the 26th of December right now it's the 25th of December you know I could see a uh, possibility of it peaking up above here, getting even more overbought, and then slowly starting to sell off. And I know I've been saying the markets are looking like they're selling off. You know, I'm continuing to stick by that word, guys, because I do think eventually we're going to see a sell-off in the markets, right? I can't predict it. No one out there can predict it. If they're saying they can predict it, they're lying because no one understands or no one can truly grasp you know, market timing and when it's going to, uh, you know, reverse to the downside or the upside. But I'm still sticking to my thoughts and my beliefs that we're going to sell off in the next week, two weeks, whenever it ends up happening, guys. And, you know, the closer we do get to March 1st, you know, I think the market's going to be more and more volatile. It's going to be, you know, somewhat what it was like in the month of December where we would have you know, big swings to the upside, followed by more selling, big swings, you know, all of this crazy stuff. I think February is going to be a pretty crazy month in my personal opinion, right? Drop a comment. Let me know if you guys agree with me there. I know a lot of you guys probably think the same exact thing. So the NASDAQ today did... uh pretty well, right? We can see, like I said earlier on in this video, we were up around 1.7%, um, you know, in terms of the NASDAQ. It's looking like we're testing that resistance at around 68.20 right now. We're cracking the, around 6,800. It's looking like we're testing and we can see, you know, that's been a resistance in the past. On the 17th of January, we actually peaked around 68.10 and then started to pull back, but we held above the, uh, 50 SMA here on the 180 day four hour chart and it's looking like we're making a cup pattern here so two things could potentially happen from where we are right now in terms of the Nasdaq and a we can either pop up and get rejected by this resistance and start to head down, which would be a double top formation, meaning that this is a bearish move, right? If we double top here at around 6810, 6800, that could mean we're heading back to the downside. But if we end up breaking out of 6800, out of 68, 10, 20, wherever this, you know, resistance is around 6,800 to 6,820, that's going to be a bullish move for the NASDAQ. And we could be headed to the next spot, which in this case is going to be around 6,850. And then eventually maybe even back to around, let's say, you know, 6,900, which would be the next level of resistance, you know, for the NASDAQ composite. So if we're looking, you know, at this 180 chart, just keep an eye on this resistance, guys. Are we going to break out of it, head to the next resistance, or are we going to double top and start to sell off, which is going to be a bearish pattern for the NASDAQ? And really why the NASDAQ is doing so well today, in my opinion, is because of Apple, guys. We saw a pretty solid day today from Apple. It's up around 3%, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a little bit, uh, in a couple minutes here later on in this video. But, you know, in terms of the overall markets, guys, 
pretty solid day today and uh you know we are still at some major resistances especially on the spx but let's say you know on this next trading day maybe this next week let's say we do have a full-on green week that is going to be a you know that's going to be something very interesting to think about right because at that point we're going to be out of the major moving average resistances in all of these um, indices, right? Technically, on the NASDAQ, we are already out of this resistance on the 180 SMA, but on the Dow Jones and the S&P, we're still technically right by those. So if we actually break above, guys, that's going to be a huge pattern break to the upside. And honestly, that on a technical basis is putting us back in an uptrending pattern for the SPX and for the Dow if that does end up happening guys so just keep an eye on these indices guys very important to decide what you're going to be trading in terms of inverse ETFs are you going to be trading large cap stocks if the markets are pushing up it's always important to track these pre-market hours large caps pre-market hours to see you know where the market could potentially be moving for that day and of course guys this upcoming week as well is a huge week for earnings we have Amazon on we have Tesla, we have Apple, three of off the top of my head that I'm going to be watching very closely. I'm pretty sure Amazon's this upcoming week, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm positive Apple and Tesla are this upcoming week on Wednesday. I'm pretty positive Tesla's on Wednesday, and I'm pretty sure Apple's on Wednesday as well. So just keep an eye on these earnings reports, guys, and this whole next week is going to be huge. So what did I trade today, guys? I traded the Gold Future Bull ETF, which is also known as JNUG, ticker symbol J-N-U-G. So we saw a very bullish move today from the Gold Futures. We saw the sell-off all the way to 1275, 1280 range, which I was talking about in a couple of videos ago, and we, we actually held... The 180 SMA very nicely on this longer term chart. And that's what I was looking for to decide whether or not I wanted to trade JNUG or JDST. So let me just elaborate on this very quickly. So you guys recall a couple of videos ago, I was saying I was watching JDST on the potential break below the 180 SMA. And if we broke below the 180 SMA on gold futures is what I'm saying here, that would be a good opportunity for JDST. But since we never got that pattern, guys, and we slowly started to bounce on the 180 SMA today, showing a you know continuation of the uptrend, right? That is what opened up my eyes to trading JNUG today. So if we take a little bit closer look on the gold futures here, we can see, you know, at around 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is when we started to climb up very quickly from around 1280 all the way to around, let's see, around 1290 when the market opened. And at 1290, guys, I started to see that we were continuing the uptrend pattern into the market today. So that opened up my eyes to JNUG, and we can see, guys, JNUG had a ridiculous day today. 10%, it was climbing up pre-market hours very heavily from 840 all the way to around 890 when the market opened. We took that dip at around 819, or uh, not, not 819, 930, right? We can see we took that dip. We bounced on that 50 SMA. The RSI got a little bit oversold at that point, opening up for a better opportunity. That's when I ended up looking at this one very heavily as a trade, right? We bounced on the 50 SMA, ended up breaking above that 890 pre-market resistance. And this is actually when I ended up taking my position at around literally like 935. Once the market opened, I ended up taking a position at right around like nine dollars on JNUG and my whole goal here guys was to grab two percent on JNUG I wanted to be a little bit more conservative since it was already up a ton from the you know the previous day right it was already up nearly 60 cents per share when I ended up buying in but I wanted to play the momentum push to the upside that we were seeing on gold and you know that's what I ended up doing guys I wanted to keep a stop loss on this one a tighter stop loss and pretty much when I was in the profit, guys, when I was in the profit, I set a trailing stop loss. So pretty much I would profit even if the stock ended up going down. So if you guys want me to talk a little bit more about trailing stop losses, 
It's very it's very simple topic, but you know if you're already in the profit in terms of a swing trade or a day trade, you can set a trailing stop loss on that. So let's say you know it drops 10% during the day and you have a 2% trailing stop loss on it, you know you'll be able to stop your losses when it drops 2% and avoid that extra 8% loss that you would get if you didn't have that you know 2%. Uh, trailing stop loss and this way you can grab those profits and not lose the profits if you didn't have that stop loss you guys understand what i'm saying hope i made that a, a bit clear for you but i got in at around nine dollars you know once it got to around nine ten that's when i started to put my trailing stop loss on it and i had my limit order at about two percent profit right two percent profit very simple so from nine dollars up two percent it ended up hitting at around, what was it, like $9.18. So that was literally my trade for the day, guys. Very, very simple. Kept the trailing stop loss on it so I wouldn't lose money once I was in the profit. Set my limit order to $9.18, $9.19, whatever that was. Grabbed that 2% and I was done for the day. And this is literally what I do you know, mostly every day, but especially on Friday, because I like to keep Fridays a bit more conservative. And I typically just trade less on Fridays, guys, to be completely honest with you guys. I don't know why it might just be a mental thing with me. But you know, I feel like Fridays are slower days. But some days Fridays are better days. So I can't really just, uh, you know, bundle all that and put it in one, uh, you know, one category because that's not really true all the time. But for the most part, I would say, um, you know, Fridays are slower for me. So drop a comment down below. Let me know what you guys ended up trading today. If you caught the move in JNUG, let me know. Oh, and also I want to let you guys know, I added some more shares to my AT&T position um, in my longer term portfolio. So for all you guys out there that have been asking me about some longer term uh, dividend stocks, longer term portfolio holdings that I do have, I'm making a video for tomorrow called five dividend stocks um, I'm trading in 2019, five dividend stocks I'm buying. So keep an eye on out for that video. It's going to be a pretty good video talking about some of my holdings and what their dividend yields are and what the benefits are of just having a strong uh, dividend company in your long-term portfolio, producing you income on a daily, not daily basis, monthly basis, usually on a quarterly basis where you can, you know, reinvest and buy more shares and just build your wealth over the long term. Ended up just buying, what was it, like 10, 11 shares of at and and, you know, that's just something I ended up doing today as well. Just figured I'd tell you guys um, about that. So in terms of some other movers today, like I showed you all, Apple did very well today. It was up $5, up 3%. It's right at that resistance right now on the 180-day SMA. Very uh, key level right there. Facebook had a solid day today, guys. It's up around $3, up around 2%. And I have a question for you all. Do you think this is... Is the time where Facebook is finally starting to head back up to the 150s, maybe the 160s. We see it clearly broke the downtrend of the 180 SMA. We're now holding that 180 SMA as a support. We even bounced on it, which is another very good sign for that reversal. What do you guys think in terms of the technicals on Facebook? I think they're looking pretty good right now for a reversal. We saw Amazon ended up doing pretty solid today, up 1%, up $15. Let's see some other stocks here. I think the uh, actually the semiconductors today did very well again, guys. We saw Micron up $2.30, up around 7%, and I'm very happy about this, guys, because like I mentioned, this is in my long-term portfolio. I was down around 30% on it, and over the past two days, literally, I've gained back 10, 12, 13% of my money, which is a very awesome thing in terms of uh, Micron. We saw AMD today did very well. It's another uh, chip company up $1.08, up around 6%, 5% in terms of AMD. Let's see if NVIDIA did well today. I actually haven't checked their stock. That one did all right. It did about 1.5% today. Pretty solid. Another one that did well was Canopy Growth, guys. Another 10% 
move in terms of canopy. So guys, you know, these weed stocks, I feel like whenever they hit, well, not these weed stocks, CGC in particular, whenever it hits this support at around $25, it's literally done this about three times, I believe in the past, right? We've hit $25, then we spike up all the way back to 45.50. It's literally done this once. Now it's doing it again. And if we pull back again, guys, back to the $28, $30 range, which honestly I could see happen because we've seen that happen in the past, right? We can see on this one year, one day, you know, we popped up to 36, back down to 25, popped up to 55, back down of 25. Now we're heading back up. So if we do something like that again, where we sell off, you know, I might consider taking a longer term swing position, uh, a little bit more risky on this one in terms of CGC, but I think it is worth it guys, because, you know, we've been seeing some ridiculous moves and we can see Kron. I think Kron did well today again, up around 2%. And I actually got a request to talk about one stock very quickly, and I'm going to end off this video. And let me just take a look on my comment section very quickly so I can see which one it was. It was KHRNF. KHRNF. Let's take a look at this one. I think it was a penny stock because I looked at it a bit before this video. And yes, it is a penny stock. So I typically don't trade penny stocks but just to give you guys my little two cents my analysis on this one you know it's looking pretty decent in terms of the hold above the 180 sma as a nice solid support but the one thing here guys that i'm not too liking too much is i feel like you know we're a bit overbought on this one and we missed the bounce that we could have gained if we um you know bought it right here on this 180 sma uh support right i feel like we missed out here, you know, I would be a little scared, you know, banking on it going from here, maybe back up to 160. So if it does end up pulling back, maybe back to that 180 SMA, that might be a better entry point in terms of, uh, you know, KHRNF. And this one's not as bad as some of those other penny stocks that we see that are like complete pump and dumps, right? Like MBOT, MBOT's one that's a complete pump and dump, right? We can see it went from 190 all the way to $20. And now we're dumping all the way back. So I would not be surprised if this one dumped, you know, maybe back to the $5 range, $6 range. I literally called it out. You know, we were up here, people in the chat were asking me, you know, I got some comments, some details. DMs and I was like, wait for it, guys. It's gonna dump. It always dumps. And guess what happened? It dumped, right? It went from 19 all the way to $7 in a matter of four days. And, you know, that's why I typically don't like to trade these, right? I've, I've traded, there was one in particular about a year ago that I actually traded and I made a crap ton of money just in one day. That might have been the biggest percentage trade I've ever made. I wish I remember, I wish I remember the ticker symbol guys it was one of these weird stocks that you literally just don't even know it's sketchy i traded it and i made like 60 percent in a day I, it was ridiculous i never really do that but just for that day you know i caught it uh, at an early time and i ended up trading it uh you know, pretty well for about 60%. I think the ticker started with a K. I'm pretty positive it did. But if I do end up finding that, I'll share with you guys one day. But that was probably my biggest trade in terms of percentage, you know, messing around with some penny stocks, you know, but I don't typically do that. But, you know, sometimes we all cave in to the uh, the glamour of some penny stock trading, right? So I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you did, feel free to drop a like and leave a comment and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram as well as on Twitter and join our Discord group chat as well as our Facebook group. All of those are linked down below in the description box. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.